Hello everyone. Uh, today I will be working with you on this question paper to prepare you for your examination. So we'll be looking at this question paper that was written uh, on 16 November 2021. So if you want to follow what I'll be doing today, you must just get hold of this question paper uh, so that you can follow. So I will be working on pastel, as we know. So on pastel, you have to make sure that uh, the company that you'll be working on is, is loaded. So as you can see here, if it's like this, it means there's no company that is uh, active. So in order to, for you to, see, to, check, to, to, to activate the company that you'll be working with, you must go to open, file open, and then the file or the company name will be there. So in this case, what company name are we looking for? We are looking for Voni, according to this question paper. As you can see here, uh, that company is not there. So in the in the exam or when you write your assessment, your your lecturer will make sure that the company is loaded for you. And then let's say uh, you want to do your own practice at home. You can also request the the company data from your lecturer, and then you can, you must load it uh, in your computer so that you can work at home. So just to start with, I'm going to show you. How do you load the company data to Pastel? At the moment, as I've said, we don't have that company under Pastel. So you go to where you, you have, you have um, saved your, your, your company data. In this case, I'm going to go to my memory stick. That's where I've saved my company data. And then, as I've said, we'll be working on Voni. So in your memory stick, you'll have to check that company name. Then right-click on it and then copy it. Don't open it, just right click and copy. And then you look for uh, your, your Windows drive, which is a Windows C drive. There you have to check the program where you want to paste this company data to. So in this case, we want to paste our company data in the program called Sage Pastel. So I'm going to right click again and paste my information there. So it means the company is now loaded uh, on my Pastel program. So let's see when we go back to Pastel, are we going to see uh, this company? Um, again, remember to, 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 to activate your company, you must go to File, Open. And uh, you'll see uh, when you check again here, you can find your company that you've already loaded. So it means there's an extra or additional step that you need to do to make sure that your company appears here. So you go to um, add company and then you go to add company again. When you arrive on the screen, you scroll down. If you can see your company, you can just activate it. But I'll have to scroll, scroll down because I have uh, more companies here. So I will see that Voni is now there. Then I can open it by clicking and clicking OK, then I'm going to close here. When I come here again, I will see that now the pastel uh, company data called Voni is being added. So I'm going to open it. So in the exam, it will be already loaded for you. You just have to open. So now, how do I see I'm on the right company? The company name is appearing now there. It says pastel partner Voni. You can see that uh, when I see, I've got my customers, my suppliers, my inventory, and my general ledger. So it means my company is now active on the program. So the first thing that I need to do, uh, that's the, they want you to do every time you, you, you write your exam, they want you to put your examination number or your ID number. So that's the first thing that you must do before you can start even reading your question paper. You must make sure that once you see that you're in the correct company, you can now add in your ID number. So how do you do that? You go to set up a, a, a company parameters. Then you put your password that was used to create your company. And then under the setup company parameters, you go to the name, you click in there. On your keyboard, you, you press Control shift t without releasing. So this box will appear uh, where you can put your ID number. So without doing anything, I'll just put my ID number there. Okay. Then you click on OK. 
So your ID number is now showing there. And then you can click on OK again to exit the screen. So once you have done this, you'll see that your ID number is now showing on your title bar. So what does that mean? It means that whenever, when you print anything now on this uh, company, your ID number will appear, which is what is required in the exam. So that was step number one. You make sure that you have put in your ID number or examination number. So the next step is to read the scenario that you are given in the question paper. So I'm going to read quickly the scenario that you are given. Uh, there on page five, uh, uh, on section B, question four, it says, Miss Vivian Kasim is the owner of Oni Beauty, and she approached you to do the processing for March. You must underline that, March 2021, uh, because you need to understand the period in which you'll be working. So as we know that the company's got 12 months, but in pastel, we call those 12 months period. It means there will be period one, which is the beginning of the a financial period, there will be period two, which is the second month of the period, period three, which is the third month of the period, and so forth, up to period 12. So you must know which period are you supposed to be processing on. So Voni Beauty sells a beauty product. You must also underline that because you have to understand the nature of the business. What is it that they are selling? So that when you are processing your purchase invoice, uh, you know uh, uh, which source document uh, you are buying stock and which source document you are not buying stock because they are not processed in the same place. Mm -hmm. So they say the business make use of the computerized accounting system pastel. You are appointed as a bookkeeper. And then they say the financial year of the business runs from 1 March 2021 to 28 February 2022. So they are giving you the whole accounting period there from period one up to period 12. So the business is registered for VAT purposes. I'm continuing to read there and make use of a two monthly payment for to the South African Revenue Services according to the invoice basis. Refer to the addendum attached. So it means in your question paper, there is a last paper that they attach that con con contains uh, uh, admissible deductions regarding the input tax. Uh, in this case, we'll be calculating our VAT at 15%. So that is the last page that you have on your question paper. So when you are processing uh, and you are not sure whether the account is charged VAT or not, you must always refer to that and then um, it will tell you whether the account is charged VAT or is not charged VAT. So that is a scenario uh, that you are given, uh, which you have to understand. So when you proceed there, you'll see that Still on that page five, they said they say you are requested to complete setup parameters as shown under additional parameter setup. You must underline additional parameter setup because there there's something that you need to do. You cannot just read uh, and go to the next page. When you read that statement, you must stop and go to that place which is called additional parameter setup in your question paper. So you are going to page at. Uh, forward to find where is additional parameter setup, you will see that additional parameter setup is on page 9. So it means you must now work on page 9. And then we'll, la we'll later go back again uh, to where we left off when we we're reading. So I'm now on page 9 because there's something that I need to do uh, before I can start processing for this company. So under additional parameter setup on page 9, they say the details of the setup customers and document screen are, and the supplier document screen are incomplete. These details must be completed using the information below. So it means uh, they've created this company for you, but they left some of the setup to test you whether are you able to do the setup for your company. So these are the things, a few items that they are going to ask you to do under setup menu. So you must then read the details that you must complete. The first one it says uh, the supplier invoice number must start with SUP001. So it means you must go to set up uh, suppliers. There are two things that we can set up there. We can set up controls and we can, or we can set up documents. So in this case, we are going to set up the document because we are looking for the supplier invoice. So when you arrive here, you'll see that there are lots of documents that are here. 
but you have to be in the correct document that you want to modify. So in this case, you must click on supplier invoice. So that is the one that is active. Then on the next number, we are going to put what they want there, which is SUP001. All right. And then once you've done that, you are going to click on OK. So then you move to the next uh, item that you need to uh, modify. They say a credit note uh, must start with CRE01. So where do we get the credit note? We get the credit note under customers. So you go to setup again, but you go to setup um, customers. Again, with customers, we can set up the control or we can set up the document. So in this case, we're looking for documents. When you arrive here, as I've said, there will be a lot of documents. You must know exactly which document are you modifying. In this case, we are modifying the credit note. And then our next number is going to be uh, CRE01. So you just put that CRE01 and then you click on OK. And then we move to the next item. It says interest charge on outstanding account of customers must be 24%. So it means now this business if uh, the customers are not paying on time, they charge their outstanding uh, amount at 24% per annum. So we need to set up that for all the customers of this business. How are we going to do that? We go to set up uh, uh, customers and then we go to control this time. We have to uh, go to set up control. And then under set up control, we are now controlling all the customers of this business. Um, we can... Uh, uh, as you can see, there are various tabs. Again, there's configuration, there's statement, there's default, there's description, there's rounding. But our focus is under configuration. You can see that they are talking about the interest there. So they've also, uh, I mean, activated the account that will be affected when we charge interest. But they haven't activated the annual interest, which is what we are going to do now. Then they, you must put that 24% there as the annual interest rate that you're going to charge if your customers are not paying on time then the entry type is already set up if which is the general that will be affected when uh, the interest is charged on those overdue data so this is what you are supposed to uh, activate here then you must click on okay then um the there's another bullet where it says you must now add the stock journal as a new entry type so it means they have created the journals but they did, they left one uh, uh, for you to create so where do we go again? We go to setup, um, uh, uh, entry types. Entry types always refers to the journals. And then you'll see that already they've uh, created 11 journals. So they want you to create one more. So it means you must look for the open line. And then you're going to type in the name of the journal, which is the uh, stock journal. As we know that a, a, a stock is an asset of the business, that's why you'll see a D here, meaning it's increased on the debit side. The most important thing is to is to activate the account that we uh, that, that the stock journal will have access to. So if we click on the arrow pointing down there, we can uh, see that there are various type of account uh, that we can activate. But we want the stock journal to access uh, any account. Because what can happen, we can do the closing transfers of the opening stock and the closing stock. The owner can take stock from the business. We can also make donations of the stock. So the, the stock journal must have access uh, to any account so that when we want to do those things, we are able to do so. So once we are done, you click on OK. And then uh, the last bullet under the additional parameter set up on page 9, it says... If there is no payment terms for an invoice, create or add the specific term. So what does that mean? It means in the question paper, there will be a situation whereby we, we create a new customer or we create a new supplier which is coming with, with new terms and we don't have those terms in the system. So we need to create them. So how then do you do that? You go to um, edit a, a, a terms. And then you have your normal, but we are looking for the early terms. So you'll, you'll edit early terms. As you can see already, there are four early terms that have been created for you. So do not modify them. If they have, you have to create, I mean, there's a new term that is not here. You need to create it. It means you must go to line number 
five and create that term. So once you have done this for this question paper, it means you are done with doing your additional parameter setup. So these are the preparations for you to start to answer the question paper. So it means now we're going back to page five uh, 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 to, to, com to continue reading. So in the last uh, sentence there, it says, process the rest of the transition for March 2021 in period one. So we must underline period one because we want to know which period are you processing on. So what have we learned so far? When we are uh, writing the, our examination, uh, these are the preparations that we must do before we can answer the question paper. One, you must make sure that you are in the correct company. Uh, as you can see, we are, we, we are, we are working on Doom, oh, uh, sorry, Voni. And then two, you must make sure that your ID number or student number is inserted on the program by using Control Shift T. As you can see, the number will be appearing like that uh, uh, there. And then three, uh, you must read the scenario that you are given on the question paper. We have read that uh, uh, Voni is selling beauty product. And then four, we must do the additional parameter setup before starting processing for the transition of the company. We have seen where we are told to insert the percentage or how much the customers will be charged if they don't pay on time. We have seen how to uh, uh, change the, the, the next number. Uh, all that was done under set up customers and set up uh, uh, suppliers. We have seen also how to create a new uh, journal, the new entry type. So that was done under additional parameter setup. And then number five, we, we, we have to take note of the period in which we'll be processing. On this case, we are processing on period one, which is March 2021. So now I'm going to move to number six and seven. Number six, it says we must now confirm uh, the information that it has already been loaded for us. So um, on, page, on page six, you will see that it, call, it talks about the parameter setup. So we are going to confirm what has been created for us. 4.1, the entry types are there. And they've been created. We have seen them. 4.2, how do you confirm this? 4.2, you will see that the suppliers are there. Click on the suppliers. You'll see the suppliers are there. Then 4.3, but 4.2, the, the suppliers are there, but there's something that you need to do. They say process, underline process. This means there's something that you need to do before you, you, you continue with your question paper there. So just write NB because we'll be working with 4.2 when we process our transactions as well. So 4.3, uh, they're telling you that um, the customers are already been set up. You can see them on the system. And then 4.4, they are talking about your inventory. They say it's already been set up. Okay. But there's something that is very, very important uh, about your inventory. You need to understand what is the profit markup that your business is charging when they are selling. As you can see there in the middle of that page seven, they tell you that the business is charging 43% markup on cost price. So what does that mean? It means in the question paper, there will be a, a situation whereby we are buying a new stock item which we want to sell. So the only information that we'll be having with that stock, it will be the cost price. So it means we need to know the formula of calculating the selling price so that we can put that selling price when we are creating this stock item. So as you can see, we need to know the formula of, the, of calculating the selling price. It says selling price is equal to cost price multiplied by 100 plus X. X representing the markup. It can be any percentage. You see that each and every question paper has its own uh, uh, profit markup. Then you divide by 100. So in this case, when you are calculating your selling price, you are going to say cost price multiplied by 100 plus 43 over 100, which is 143 over 100. Then you will be able to get your selling price. Okay, so that is the information which is very important when you are preparing to answer the question paper. And then lastly, uh, but not least, is page number eight, where they talk about the general ledger. You can click on them. General ledger, they say, 
already set up. As you can see, they are, these accounts are already appearing on the system. So, this all uh, that you do when you have to prepare to start writing. So, in the next video, we are now going to start uh, uh, answering the question paper because we have done all the preparation that is necessary uh, to start our exam. So, if you find this video useful, uh, please subscribe on my channel so that you will be notified if I post a new video and also like my, my, my video if uh, they are useful for, for, for you. Uh, thank you very much.